It's good to be in his presence and it's good to be in your presence. He brought us all here together for a very special purpose and a very special day. I believe he's going to speak to our hearts today. Do you believe that with me? Amen. 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 Let's begin this service by having a call to worship from Miss Beverly McGill. I don't have anything to read from today except for my heart. <laughs> but I'm glad to see everybody here. I wish more people would understand that they need to come to church on Sunday, especially this weekend with it being Memorial Day. Uh, I, wore, I made this shirt a few years ago, and it's to remember my dad, who was in World War II, my, hus my first husband, who died 26 years ago, and he was in Vietnam. And my last husband, Bob, who was also in World War II. And uh, my first husband, he just could not believe that his government would send him to Vietnam and put them in harm's way with the Agent Orange that they spread around. Because it contained, and the government knew it, it contained the same gas that they used in the death chambers in Germany. <coughs> so, but uh, I just wanted everybody, to, I know that everybody's here today and we all respect what's going on. And people need to know they can still party this weekend, but they still need to go to church. Because yes, God loves them. So... And if we could pray, dear Lord, thank you for this day and this year. We've come through a bad year, but we're coming back. Please let everyone know that our servicemen and women need their help and their respect. Yes. And that we all need to remember what is going on. In your name, amen. 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 Thank you, Beverly. Mm -hmm. Very well said. Um, it's a long weekend for a reason, isn't it? It's a long weekend, not just so we can take off work and so we can grill and barbecue. It's a long weekend so that we can remember the great sacrifice that was made so that we can have the freedom to do exactly what we're doing here today, to assemble and worship and praise the Lord and, and just be living in a free country. Amen. It's so Amen. good to be here this morning. We don't take that privilege lightly or for granted. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Are you ready for some church? Yes. I'm ready for some church. Man, I've been thinking about this all week. I'm so glad to be here. I can't wait to see what God's going to do. Amen. He's fixing to do something, don't he? He is. He he's is. going to speak to us in a very powerful way. So with that said, let me declare that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. And also with you. Amen. Heavenly Father, we receive grace today. Thank you for grace Without grace, we would have never been saved, Lord. We would have never known you. But with grace, we are seated with you in heavenly places. We have become your children, Lord God. I thank you so much. Joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We love you, Lord. We bless you. We thank you for this privilege today to be here. Lord, you're going to speak. and You're going to speak powerfully to us today, I believe. Lord, we celebrate you, Lord Jesus Christ, the strong and mighty Son of God. And it's in your name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's stand to your feet, if you will, and let's set this service in order by declaring our faith in the Apostles' Creed, and then we'll sing a hymn after that. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, 
The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Turn with me in your United Methodist hymnal, page 714 in the blue song book. Take my 
said it was going to be easy, but he said, I'll be there with you. I'll go with Amen. you all the way. I'll never leave you. I will never forsake you. Amen. Amen. How, many have found, how many of you have found that true in your life? Amen. Oh, dear Lord. He's never leaving me. He's never forsaken me. He is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And Amen. He has instituted us, the body of Christ, to take care of each other, lean on each other, bear one another's burdens, and to love one another. Amen. That's why we're here today, to celebrate him and to do so by celebrating each other, loving each other. This is time. This is called uh, uh, Joys and Concerns, Prayer and Share. So I'd like to hear what God is doing in our midst. And before we begin, I just want to, want to say, Cheryl, we stand with you today, dear sister. We know it's been the hardest week. It's been such a hard week. And uh, if you, I think everyone knows here Cheryl lost her mother this week. Would you like to say anything to us? Do you feel like you, you just don't? Sometimes words just don't want to come, do they? But I just want you to know that we love you and we are here for you. And uh, through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Precious Lord, take my hand. As we take the Lord's hands, we're going to take your hand today and we're going to stand with you and pray and just believe that God is a very present help in the time of trouble. Amen. Amen. Let's love on her today. Let's, let's lift her up and her whole family today, her father and uh, all, of her, all of her family. Who else? Anybody have a, if you have a word for Cheryl, you're welcome to, to speak that out as well. My great nephew graduated Thursday night. Well, good. Thank yeah. God. Thank God. He has special needs, so oh. he's, he's kind of struggled, but he had a really good last year, and um, we had a little party for him yesterday. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. I saw my baby go his personality just popped out yesterday. And today is my mother's fifth birthday in heaven. Wow. Yeah. Those anniversaries are tough sometimes, but they're also special because they remind us how much we miss them, but how much we long to see them again. Absolutely. It's not going to be much longer for any of us, you know? That's right. We're all living in our last days. We just have a fleeting time here on earth. But the Lord says that we will live with him forever and all the saints yeah. together forever. So praise God. Praise God. It seems like a short time, but it seems like forever. So it does. It doesn't seem yeah. like forever, can it? It does. It can. Thank you, Glenda. Who else? Mark, I did have a message for yes, the church. Um, I called Greg and Patricia to let them know about Mama, and they did want me to let all of y'all know that they love y'all and we're thinking about you. They both had COVID. Um, Greg was in the hospital for six days and I see you three days with COVID. He said he wasn't on the ventilator, but he was on the oxygen. Lord. And, um, Patricia was, had it, but her case wasn't as, quite as bad as his. But he did want me to send his love to all of you guys. Well, thank you so much. Um, thank you, yeah, he, he says he's still feeling not good. He just got out of the hospital about three days ago. He said he could come to the funeral wow. if it wasn't, you know, for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you for letting us know that, Cheryl. Who else has a, a prayer request? I have one. Um, and I was hesitant to say his name, but I'm, I'm going to say his first name. There's a fellow at Iris Place. It's been there for probably a year, year and a half. And <laughs> he had a real struggle. He's one of the younger people there. And you'll know who I'm talking about, Steve. And um, Steve is probably, I think, 72, 73. 
he's suffering with early Parkinson's symptoms and he's, his health is going downhill. He and I ride to the doctor back and forth and sometimes when we're alone we have a chance to talk and I've tried so hard to be a friend to him and but he's just he's so closed off and he's 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 miserable. He he doesn't make friends easily, but he uh he's he's not doesn't enjoy where he lives because he doesn't relate to anyone. So over the over the time I've he's been there, I've tried to help him, try to talk with him. And not long ago I asked him, I said, Are you a, are you a fellow who appreciates prayer, Steve? Because I want to pray for you. He said, Well, no, not really. He wasn't mean or he wasn't uh, was it against it, but yet he just indicated he is not a religious man. And so we had a time together on Thursday to take him to the doctor, and we had a, a talk at length, and I asked him, I said, Steve, are you doing any better? Because through COVID, of course, it was, it was a tough time. And he, uh, he began to share his heart with me some, and it was when the Holy Spirit started saying, now you need to speak to this guy. You need to tell him the truth. And uh, I said, Steve, I'm not trying to preach to you, but I said, I do want you to know Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you so much. And I said, I love you. I consider you a good friend. And he seemed to receive that. He seemed to receive it. And we talked on for a few moments. And when we got out of the car, y'all got to help me with this part. Because when I, we started to get out of the car and he started to go in the, in the place, I said, well, I'll see you later. And I, I looked at him and I said, now, you remember I told you I was going to pray for you, right? And he said, you're okay with that, right? And he said, oh, yeah. And I said, you better get ready because when I pray, when I pray and my people pray, stuff starts happening. And he just grinned at me. He just smiled at me. And I don't know why I said that. I just feel like the Lord put that in my heart because we've got to believe something's going to happen. And yeah. the Lord said, if you'll seek me with all of your heart, you'll find me. He will reveal himself to someone who earnestly, honestly seeks him. So I want y'all to join me in prayer today that the Lord, I said, well, I went out on a limb right there. But, you know, uh, I believe God will do it. I believe God will reveal himself. Now, whether he'll receive it or not is up to him. But I said, things are going to start happening. And so I said, and also I told him, I said, Jesus isn't going to make your life perfect. This is not going to solve all your problems. But I tell you what, you will look at your problems entirely differently when you come to him, when you let him have those burdens. And he seemed to listen. So y'all help me pray for Steve. Y'all help me pray. Boy, wouldn't that be awesome to see the Lord just melt that heart and watch you yeah. save someone right in our midst? Oh, uh, glory. Help us, Lord. Lord, touch him, I pray. Yes, he will. You've seen it happen in 90 year old veterans who yes, are hard as a rock, hard as a stone. 91, 99. Yeah, 99. Yeah. And, uh, you know, nobody is too too hard or too far gone for God. Nobody. Right. So thank God. Who else? I thought about completely remember my dad. Um, he did see the neurologist, but basically it was just like, yeah, we need to do another test. And, um, we're going to take some physical therapy. Here's some anti-inflammatories. We'll see you in 30 days. You know, kind of thing. So that's a long time. Or well, the end of I think it's the end of June. And he said, "Well, yeah." So just keep praying for him. Um, I don't know any details. My mother told me that my brother is having surgery on his shoulder, and I could I didn't quite gather whether it was this he's having this weekend or it, I'm not sure when. I tried to call him, and, and I only got the voicemail. But he's having surgery and his dog's having surgery, so um, <laughs> yeah, he was good. concerned about himself and who was going to take care of his dog. Yeah. Um, so we're going to pray for both of them. And I was just thinking when you said that while ago about when my people pray, things happen. You know, some things that happen in our lives, you know, I guess it's the innocence of a child. But I can remember being 14 years old and being in a church that was going through some great turmoil at the time when we were in the middle of a pastoral search. It was a very, we were on the precipice of a situation where that it was very important that we get the right pastor that could handle the situation. Now I was 14, but I understood this. And I can remember being in my room at night and praying out to God, and I had always heard that scripture that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Yeah. And I prayed, and I said, God, I quoted that scripture, and I said, you know, I said, I'm being as effectual as I know how. I don't really know how to be no more effectual. And I'm as righteous as I know how to be because Jesus makes me righteous. Yeah. And I said, as far as fervency, I don't think I can feel any more fervent than I feel right now. <laughs> and I said, I'm not a man, I'm a woman, but I know that you have no respect for persons. And I remember praying that scripture and, and, and talking that through with God as a 14-year-old child. And I saw God come in. And bring in the pastor to that church who brought peace to that storm. And God used him. And, and he was a mighty man of God, a man that to this day he's now going to be with the Lord. His name was Pastor Vernon Wilson. And I loved that man and respected that man and his son Ronald, who's now the bishop, or has been the bishop, I think he's acting in the CH Church, the denomination. Fabulous, marvelous family. 
But I saw God move in that situation, and it changed my life as a 14-year-old because I learned that God is faithful to his word. Amen. And when we pray, things happen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He's not just playing with us. He's not just saying pray, pray, pray. He says, I'm going to honor the prayers of my people. Right. Thank you, Angie. Who else has something for us today? Um, if y'all could keep my dad to an honor. For mom, um, a week ago, last Friday, he was in an accident um, mm. on three, Highway 316. He crossed over Barber Creek, and when he got on 316 to head back toward Barber Creek, he didn't see a car coming, and it hit him. His truck, the back end of his truck is smashed mm. all over. He spun around and around and went into an embankment, and he's got crack, two crack ribs and stitches up and down his arms. And this is what got me. When he walked in, it was his fault, so he got you know a citation for it. He threw the citation. He had he lost two rod and rails. He had been fishing. Him and my brother had been mm -hmm. Lake Ocon I mean Oconee River fishing. I would he lost two rod and rails, his tackle box, two coolers full that had fourteen or fifteen fish in it. Can't be found. Thus somebody evidently had to pick the stuff mm -hmm. up and, and take it. Um, but he came in and threw that paperwork in my lap. He said, well, I don't guess I'll ever drive again. said, I wish it had to just kill me. And oh, that just oh. tore me up. Yes, it did. And, yes, I mean, you know, then within a week, he loses his mama. And next Thursday would have been their 65th wedding anniversary. Mm -hmm. So Daddy really needs Absolutely. lots and lots of prayers. Right he didn't mean that when he said that. That was just, yeah. he was just so disappointed and so angry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bless his heart. Lord, Lord, we pray for him. I pray for your whole family, Cheryl. Thank you for sharing that with us. Who else? Anyone? I don't know if you've seen in the messages, but anyway, the baby Cheyenne should be going good. She was uh, 6 pounds, 14 ounces at birth. And, and of course, I, I got to be there when they let me in. <laughs> <laughs> got to hold the little baby, so. We pray for her and her mother, and, and well, she's got a brother and sister too. But, uh, it's uh, Cheyenne Gable. Amen. She's so precious. I've seen those pictures. Yeah. You're a little crazy about her, aren't you? A little bit. A little bit crazy. <laughs> I don't blame her. Okay, let's approach the Lord in prayer. Let's move into our season of prayer. Um, speak out these requests. If God puts one on your heart, I'm not the only one who can pray. I love it when other people will pray. Or, for all of them or just one of them, if the Lord puts something on your heart, speak it out. Let's move into a season of, of time when we're all seeking the Lord, and then we'll pray as we normally do, pastoral prayer and the Lord's Prayer together. So enter, if you will, into a season of prayer. Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call upon His name while He is near. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I want to pray for Cheryl this morning. You said for us to bear each other's burdens. Yes. Lord, no, we can't take away the, the, the pain of the loss of her mother. But God, we lift her up in our prayers this day. We lift her up in love. Lord, I pray that you'd reach out and comfort Cheryl and her father. Lord, where their hearts are broken and where they feel lost and and grief, Lord God, and sorrow, Lord, that you would be with them through their time of mourning and through their time of sorrow. Lord, I pray that you would bring them peace, that you bring them love. And God, I pray that you touch your father's body and heal him, Lord Jesus, from this uh, accident, Lord God, and vehicle, Lord God. Touch him, Lord, and uh, take away the soreness and the bruising and any damage that was done to his body, Lord God. I pray that you'd restore to him whatever damages were done and all of his belongings and his vehicle, God, that you would put him back, Lord, into uh, restoration of the things that he has lost. God, I pray that you give him encouragement. And Lord God, help him, Father, to find joy in, in the day-to-day -day things and help Cheryl to find joy. God, restore joy to them, the joy of their salvation, Lord God. Yes. And you said that weeping lasts for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And Lord, help them to remember that it won't always feel this bad, and Lord, they will, in time, Lord God, I, the 
the sorrow and the grief will become a part of them. They'll never forget their loss, Lord Jesus, but you will help them through their loss, Lord yes. God. And God, I pray that you would just wrap her in your arms of love and wrap him in your arms of love this day, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, I lift up my friend Steve, Lord. God, uh, I pray that you would reveal yourself to him. I pray that it would be so powerful and so uh, unmistakable, Lord, that he would fall to his knees and know that you are God and know that you love him with an everlasting love in Jesus Christ and Jesus, you shed your blood for him. Lord, I speak the blood and the power of Jesus over Steve right now in Jesus' name. Lord, as a church, we collectively... Lord, come before you by faith, believing that things do happen when we pray. The effectual, fervent prayers of righteous men and women avail much. They're very, very powerful and effective. Lord, and we receive that right now, and we send the word. We send the gospel, the word to Steve right now in Jesus' name that he would bow his knee and understand that you are his only hope. Lord, I speak hope and blessing and peace and and every spiritual blessing over his life now if he will receive lord i pray he would receive touch him i pray in jesus name touch him i pray lord for herman nation my father-in-law and for richard nation my brother-in-law lord i pray your healing mercies upon them lord herman's been through a lot lord he's standing in the pulpit preaching today lord and i know he's in pain god i pray that you would touch him touch the doctor's hand lord whether it be surgery whether it be therapy whatever is going to have to go on lord i pray that you would ease his pain lord honor Lord, your servant this morning, Lord, I know that you're taking him through this, Lord. But God, I just I lift him up to you. Isaiah 53, 5, by your stripes, he's healed, Lord. My brother-in-law, Richard, with his uh, problem with his hands, Lord, that he's uh, going to have to have surgery, Lord. And their little dog, Lord, is like their child, Dexter, Lord. I pray for Dexter, God, in Jesus' name, that you would guide the surgeon's hand as he removes these gallstones from the little fellow. Lord, I pray that you would give he and Natasha peace, and that you would give Dexter, Lord, healing as well. God, you love our animals. I'm so thankful for that. Lord, I thank you for little Cheyenne, Lord. Oh, grandchildren are so special, Lord. And I thank you. I just see the excitement in Tony's eyes. And Lord, I just see what it what it does for him. God, I thank you that he is a strong papa tea. Lord, and he is uh, he is the uh, the voice of, of God in his family, Lord. He speaks your word over his family, God. He stands in faith for his family. And God, those situations that go on in family, sometimes, Lord, we can't, we can't control them, Lord, but we can give them to you. We can speak your word over them. Lord, I'm so thankful that he's a, he's a man of God standing in his family, Lord, for right and for, for truth and leading his family in the way. Lord, for Statham United Methodist Church, I thank you for everyone gathered here today. Lord, we're missing quite a few today. I pray that you would be with them. Lord, I thank you for this church. I thank you for everything you've done for us, Lord. I thank you for the vision that's beginning to come, Lord. I thank you for the, the love that we have here, Lord, the peace that we have here, Lord, and and Lord, people are so faithful in, the, in, in their offering and their tithes. Lord, I thank you, God, for that. And Lord, we, will, uh, we bless you, we praise you, and we thank you, Lord, for everything you do it among us. And now we pray as the Lord taught us to pray in the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, you notice I didn't pray for the offering because I think it's time that we start passing the plate again. I know most people have probably already put your, put your funds in back there, but I want to go back to the traditional way of doing it. And uh, I have asked my dear friend, Ryan Ledford, if he would be our head usher. And he said he would, and he would be honored to do that. And I'm so thankful. That's a servant's heart. The Lord is using you, brother. If you'll go get the offering back there, we'll pass the plate just in case anyone needs it. And we will proceed and we'll pray, play doxology as we, uh, as we uh, thank God for our offering. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Tony, bless our offering for us, would you please? Oh. 
Father, we thank thee for this, the blessing that you have given us. May you use it for your honor and glory, and we'll give you all glory and praise. In Jesus' name, we are so worthy. Amen. Yes, amen. You can go put it back. Okay. Thank you, Ryan, for your service, brother. I appreciate that so much. You may be seated. We have a special song to sing for you, and then we'll proceed with the sermon. Have a little bit of a surprise at the end of church. You can see it in your bulletin there, but we'll be giving you some instructions a little bit later on how we're going to proceed. But we are... Uh,
Hebrews 11, verse 8. <coughs> Going back to our by faith series, we digressed just for a, a week or so to preach some special occasion type messages. And I am so glad to get back to this. This has been a blessing <coughs> in my life, and I hope it will be in your life. We're going to be considering Abraham. We did preach on Abraham on Mother's Day. We talked about the dysfunctional family and the poor decisions that he made, but I tell you what, Abraham is called the father of faith. He's the father of the Jewish nation, of God's people, and he is our spiritual father in the fact that he was the first one to follow God completely by faith. Uh, going out into a land, he didn't know where he was going. God called him from a place called Ur of the Chaldees, and he was obedient, walked by faith all of his life. And the Bible interprets this in the New Testament, in the book of Hebrews, and shows us just what God was doing in his life. But I want you to understand, as on all these sermons from Hebrews 11, you have the faith of Abraham. God has given everyone the measure of faith. Now what we do with it, it can grow. How much we trust him and how much we walk with him, that faith can grow. But we all start out with the same faith. You have the faith of Abraham. God has given you that faith, and it is given to you to invest yourselves in pursuit of his eternal promise. Amen. I know that sounds like a lot of words, but <laughs> it basically means that he's given us faith for a reason, and that's so that we can follow him. Yep. Just as simple as that. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. We continue in the hall of faith. The, the apostle to the Hebrews says, By faith Abraham, when called to go to a place where he would later receive as his inheritance, he obeyed and went even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past her childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he was as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. Now we go back to the book of beginnings, back to Genesis 12. Abraham was from the ancient day of the patriarchs when God called him from Ur of the Chaldees, which was in Mesopotamia, we've heard about the Fertile Crescent and the, the very cradle of human civilization, probably modern-day Babylon, somewhere around in that area, Mesopotamia. Abraham was called to come out. In Genesis chapter 12, it says, The Lord said to Abram, his name was Abram at first, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord told him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions that they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran and they set out for the land of Canaan and they arrived there. Abraham traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moreh at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring, I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there, he went on toward the hills of East Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abram set out and continued toward the Negev. Dear friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word. Abraham was called from his birthplace. He was leaving the familiar for the land of promise. He left with his whole family. His father's name was Terah. 
But the scriptures indicate, and I'll read some more scriptures in just a moment, that it was Abraham who first heard the call of God. His daddy didn't carry him out. He carried his daddy out with his whole family when God spoke to him in Ur of the Chaldees. And we don't know a whole lot about him from scripture before that, but from the Jewish documents, from the rabbinical documents, there's a, a uh, writing called the Midrash, which goes a little bit more into the story. It's not scriptural, and we don't know how authoritative it is, but the Midrash says that they were idol makers in that pagan land that they lived in, Ur of the Chaldees in Mesopotamia, where idol worship was rampant, that Abraham's father was actually an idol maker. And there's some interesting stories that say that when Abraham was a boy and the Lord began to speak to him, he began to break those idols and he began to, to uh, just turn his back on the idolatry of that region and his family business. And God said, get out of your country. Leave your familiar surroundings. You know, when I read this, I look and, I look and think about my own life. And I want to, you want to think about your own life. Have you ever left home? How many of you were born and raised right here in Statham? Most, a lot of you were, yeah. You know, um, I talk to people all the time who say, you know, they've lived all over the world. They've been all over the world. They were born somewhere in, you know, over on the other side of the country, other side of the world. And now through circumstances, it brought them here. I've always lived within about 60 miles of the hospital where I was born down in Atlanta. So for some reason or another, I'm just a homeboy. I've always been a homeboy. But there's been a couple of times when I've been jerked out of my familiar surroundings. And it's not fun, even though, it, you know, some people would laugh at it when I tell them where I came from. But I can remember when I graduated from high school, uh, one year later, my dad suddenly decided, and it all became clear to me later on, but he suddenly decided we were going to move from Atlanta up to Cumming, Georgia, up to Forsyth County, back when it was still a country town. There was nothing in Forsyth County. There was a McDonald's, and that was it if you wanted to have any fast food. And no, you had to go to Roswell or Gainesville to do any shopping. There wasn't even a Kmart or a Walmart, anything like that. It was a small country town now. Oh my goodness, you know what it's like up there. It's like a part of Atlanta. But in those days, boy, that was a culture shock. And I, I, I threw a fit. I told my daddy, I said, I don't want to go. He said, well, you prepared to support yourself? I was 19 years old. Yeah, I suppose I could have, but I'm not really set up for that yet. So I said, well, I'll just go for a little while and I'll, I'll, do, my, I'll, I'll do what I have to do. I'll get a job and I'll I'll come back. But my dad had my own best interest at heart. He knew he had to get me out of where I was at. He had to get me out of those familiar surroundings. He knew, and I believe God had placed it on his heart to move us, to move our family, because there was a, a lot going on down there on the south side of Atlanta, and I'm not sure my life would have ever turned out very well if I had stayed around the people I was around and the surroundings that I was around. My dad had a lot of wisdom and listened to God, but boy, it was hard leaving home. It was hard leaving those surroundings. But I can look back now, and it's a long story, but I see how God used those circumstances in my life to get me into a church where I began to grow spiritually and to get me into a place where I began to learn. I began to pursue college, and I began to pursue a career, and I began to understand things that I'm not sure I would have ever understood as long as I was around the people and the surroundings that I was around. And anyway, God continued that journey when He moved me to Athens. And you say, oh my goodness, that's just 50 miles, 60 miles. It was a big deal to me. I felt like I was moving to the other side of the world when I came to Athens. And I moved to Athens and I said, well, that's really my home over there. And I'll just kind of go back and forth. But pretty soon I came over to Athens. I met her. I met her. I began to realize success in my life. And I began to realize this is where God has me. And once again, God took me to another level spiritually. God took me to another level with him where I began to grow and began to grow. And I believe that today I'm where I'm at because of my willingness to follow God. Sometimes following him unwillingly in a sense when circumstances seem to dictate it. But there is great value when God places you in your unfamiliar circumstances, when he takes you out of those comfort zones, when he takes you away from, from the familiar and places you in the unfamiliar where he can work in your life. When we read in the full context of the scripture, we believe that God's call came to Abram, not to his family, but he took his whole family, took them out. And as they traveled, they stopped halfway between their home and the destination of Canaan. They didn't go all the way to Canaan. The Bible indicates that because of Terah, Abraham's father, they stopped. I don't know if he got cold feet or if he just finally insisted, this is where we're going to land, this is where we're going to stop. But it was a halfway decision. It was a halfway effort to follow God. And he stopped in Haran. And the Bible says that as soon as his father passed away, that Abram went ahead and followed the call of God. Haran is often known as the land of halfway, the land of compromise, 
Oh, it'll be good enough. We're close enough. Close enough to following God. <coughs> Folks, it doesn't work that way because Canaan was the land of promise. God said, I want to take you to Canaan, not to Haran. But even with that interruption, Abraham was faithful to God's promise. Canaan was the dream, the land of the dream. And Abram was bound to go to Canaan. Let's look at, back into the New Testament again. Acts chapter 7. You don't have to turn there, but you're probably familiar with a man named Stephen who was known as the first deacon of the church, the first martyr of the church as well. When he began to preach Jesus Christ to those uh, people in Jerusalem after Jesus had ascended to the Father and the church was in its early stages, they began to persecute anyone who would preach. And Stephen preached boldly and with great power and authority. And as he preached to the members of the Sanhedrin, who were the religious council of the Jews, he began to tell the story of Abraham. And he began to shed some light that we had not seen previously by the power of the Holy Spirit. Stephen began to prophesy. In Acts chapter 7, he told those religious leaders, brothers and sisters, listen to me. The glory of God appeared to our father Abraham while he was still in Mesopotamia before he lived in Haran. <laughs> Leave your country and your people, God said, and go to the land I will show you. And he goes on to say, uh, he gave him no inheritance here, not even enough ground to set his foot on. He didn't give Abraham anything as far as, as, far as uh, this, is, this is it right here, this is where you need to be. His promise was this city whose builder and maker was God that the Hebrew says, book of Hebrews tells us about. He says, God spoke to him and said, for 400 years, your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own, and they will be enslaved and mistreated, speaking about when the Egyptians enslaved the Israelites. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves. God said, and afterward, they will come out of that country and worship me in this place. And he goes on to explain how God had worked through Abraham to establish the Jewish nation. Friends, I want you to understand that Abraham was heir to a promise. He was heir to the promise of God that God would faithfully lead him and that he would walk with God all the days of his life and that his inheritance was not here on this earth. A Abraham lived a nomadic life. He kept moving. He was a very rich man. God blessed him abundantly. He had an entourage that followed him around. He had a small army. We would call him possibly a warrior king, if you will, because he had like a little city that moved around with him. That was how God had blessed him because of his faithfulness. But Abraham knew that his inheritance was not in that entourage that he ran, not in that city that he was the head of. His inheritance was in the Lord God who was calling him to that city which is built by God, whose mover, whose, whose architect and its builder is God. He was heir to a promise. I want to talk about inheritance just for a moment. We, I think we talked about this just a few weeks ago, but it's something to think about. We think about what are we going to leave to our children. We think about what our parents left to us. Boy, I've seen some families just get all torn up over piddling little stuff. Yeah. Who's going to get the antique stuff here in the house? Who's going to get the silverware? And who's going to get mama's clothes? Yeah, it goes on and on in some families. I've seen brothers and sisters who despise each other because of what happened with the inheritance. And sometimes people get done gravely wrong. But friends, we got to look past that stuff. We got to look past that type of inheritance. And yes, we have possessions that bring us pleasure here on earth, but this earth is not our home. This is not the end game. This is not the stopping point. This is like Abraham had stopped in Haran. That was not the place. It was not the land of promise. God has us here as sojourners. We're strangers. We're pilgrims in this world. We don't need to get too attached to the stuff around here. We don't need to get too attached to our possessions because as we said numerous times, it's monopoly money. We're playing a good game right now. We have boardwalk and park place. I have the car, you have the hat, you got the thimble, and we're proceeding around the board. We're passing go collecting $200. But pretty soon it's going to be game over, game done. Everything back in the box, and somebody else is going to play with our stuff. Friends, it's inevitable. It happens. Nothing is eternal in this world. Abraham was called to an eternal promise. Build your hope on things eternal. Yeah. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Abraham did not measure his success in the accumulation of material wealth, although he had <laughs> substantial wealth. Abraham was heir to a covenant relationship with God, beginning in Genesis 12. God made promises to him, and Abraham made promises to God. They were bound by oath 
by a blood covenant that God struck with Abraham. And that covenant developed over time as God walked with Abraham and as his faith grew. Remember I told you, you got the seed of faith, you got the faith of Abraham, but the more you obey, the more you get. The more you trust, the more you will trust. The more you see his way, the more you walk his way. Abraham saw the joy of the Lord in walking by faith and God continued to progressively reveal himself to Abraham over time. He'll do the same thing for us. Boy, I've seen God do it in my own life. I'm ready for him to do some more. I'm ready for him to keep revealing himself to us. We got to ask. We got to seek. He said that whoever asks, he will reveal himself. He will show himself to those of us who knock and, and ask and seek after him. God revealed himself in several names to Abraham. El Elyon, the God most high. El Shaddai, the breasty one we talked about a few weeks ago, that he is God almighty. He called himself Jehovah Jireh, my provider, when he provided a lamb on Mount Moriah, when Isaac was laying on that altar of sacrifice. Jehovah Jireh, our provider, provided the lamb, the same one who provided Jesus as the lamb of God who shed his blood so that we could be saved, so that we could be on this journey toward that city whose builder and maker is God. Dear friends, Abraham knew that the world was not his home. He realized the joy of his inheritance was in the true city built by God. First John chapter 2, the Apostle John on the Isle of Patmos tells us this, Do not love the world or anything in this world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life, it's not from the Father, but it's from the world. The world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God remains forever. Remains forever. This world is passing away. You know, we think 70, 80 years on this earth is a long time. That is nothing more than a vapor, the Bible tells us. We were just talking a while ago about sometimes it can seem like forever, but we are only here for a moment in time and this world is passing away. The Apostle Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he said these light and momentary afflictions are producing in us a great eternal glory that is far beyond comparison. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary. Anything you can see around you is temporary. It's going away. It's monopoly. It's fleeting. It'll be done soon. But what is unseen is eternal. That city, I'm bound for that city. That city, we're looking for a city, as the old song says, the city whose builder and maker is God. I want to ask you, where's home? What do you call home? What is home to you? Oh, I think about my house. I love my house. I love, we're doing a remodeling project right now and I can't wait to see what's done. We got us a huge TV yesterday. I can't wait to get that TV set up and we've got, got a sound bar for it. Oh, it's going to be, so it's going to boom. Angie said, I'm going to rock the whole rafters in the house because I like it loud. I've got a guitar rack. I'm going to hang up all my guitars and have my piano over there and we're going to have this neat place. It's like a little nest now. You know, we're doing this empty nester thing since we, that the kids are gone. We can kind of do what we want with the house. That's fun. That's fun. I don't ever want to sell my house. I love it. It ain't no big deal. There's no magic. It, but, but it's mine. I love it. I can't, I can't wait to get it fixed up just like we want it. But you know what? And I don't know what it's going to be here 50 years from now. I don't know what it's going to be. Maybe a shopping center. Maybe a parking lot. Next time, you know, next, next generation. I don't know. My kids may not want anything to do with it. Once I'm gone, they may just get rid of it, sell it, be done with it, spend the money. It's gone. That is not eternal. Even though I love it, I enjoy it, we enjoy the blessings of God, I've got to fix my eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and He is now seated at the right hand of God. Fix your eyes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. It's what Abraham did. It's what Abraham says to us today. The father of faith. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Look in your bulletin for some takeaway points. I don't want you to miss, and I like to go over them through the week, and maybe you will too. Takeaway points from Hebrews 11. I ask you already, have you ever left home? Are you willing to leave your place of comfort? You know, what, what is God going to call us to? He, he's not calling me to leave my house right now, I don't think, but what if He did? What if He did? Could I handle it? 
Could you handle it? It would be hard. But we got to keep our eyes on Him. If He spoke, He'd let you know. He'd let me know. He'd let you know what He wants you to do. It may not be where you live. It may be something else that you're holding on to really, really tight. It may be a relationship that needs to go. It may be a, a mindset that needs to go. It may be, uh, maybe some money that you need to let go of. Or maybe it's your hold on something that's not productive in your life. Let it go. Fix your eyes on things eternal. Will you go halfway with God or all the way? Tara said, go halfway. Let's stop, boy. Let's stop in Haran and let me do my thing. So Abraham honored his daddy out of respect for him. But they went halfway. It was a halfway compromise. It was not the land of promise. It was the land of halfway. What do you hold dear in your life? I think that's important. Every one of us need to look at that. It wouldn't hurt to write it down. What do I hold dear in my life? What do I call my prize? What are your dreams all about? What are you looking at for your inheritance to leave to your kids? Or what maybe you're going to get one day? Where's your home? Where are you going? Are you willing to trust in God's long-range vision for your life? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Bless you and praise you, Lord. Hold, we will hold to your hand, Lord Jesus. Hold to your unchanging hand. Heavenly Father, oh, let's build our lives on things eternal. Oh, we'll hold to your hand, Lord Jesus. We love you. Speak to our hearts now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I'm going to play a song and then we're going to do something very special. Tell you what, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and go outside and do our ceremony. Look in your bulletin with me if you would. I don't want to deny the prayer time. Um, if God spoke to your heart, we will pray. I would love to speak with you. But right now I have something on my heart that I would like to share with you. Notice in the red, I said as we finish the service today, Please join me quietly and reverently outside as we gather around the American flag for a Memorial Day observance. We want to remember those who gave their lives for our freedom. We will have a moment of silence followed by a thank prayer of thanksgiving and blessing. So would y'all do that with me? Would y'all join me outside? And I think I'm going to take our internet camera out there so that the people on the internet can join us. I'll put it on the steps. But if we'll just proceed out to the flagpole. Uh, silently and reverently. We're going to have a moment of silence out there. We will have our dismissal prayer there. Folks, as we gather around, we want to remember that our home is in heaven. Our allegiance and our citizenship is in heaven. We are citizens of the kingdom of God, but God has blessed us to live in the United States of America. I believe that God has given us a country of freedom. He has made America a city on a shining hill, and that has not come free. That has not come without great, great cost. Every one of us have veterans in our family who have served many of us have lost veterans who have served our country so faithfully. Today, Memorial Day, we look to God and we thank Him for those great sacrifices that men and women have made over the years so that we can be free to gather around our flag as it flies today and that we can thank God for the freedom that we enjoy in this country. I would like to call you all, if you will, to a moment of silence as we think about those. Some gave... All gave some and some gave all. Let's think about the great price that's been paid for our freedom and thank God as we all seek Him silently.
Heavenly Father, thank you for those who have given their lives so that we can live in freedom. Lord, may we stand and walk worthy of the sacrifice that was made for us. Lord, the ultimate sacrifice made by Jesus Christ on the cross. But Lord, because of your great sacrifice, we sacrifice for each other, Lord. And I thank you for those who gave all. Lord, I thank you for those who have fought on the battlefield so that we could have this country, Lord, that we call yours, Lord, that we know is a gift from you. We bless you. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. And now I'd like to ask Eagle Scout Ryan Ledford if he would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Amen. Y'all ready to celebrate? Amen. Celebrate God who is a source of our freedom. Amen. Yes, yeah, sing, Tommy. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains, to the prairies, to the oceans, white with foam, God bless America, my home sweet. love you. God bless you. Everybody fellowship and love one another. You're dismissed.